Okay, it uh, may seem like I um, haven't been listening to nothing you said, but I have. It just takes a while for me to sink in and, and get things going. So this one, uh, this one seems to be working better. It's the circuit that you showed me. And, um, basically I've got, uh, a heavy wire running over to that bifiler. I've removed the core and this heavy wind actually goes to the bottom of that coil and then it comes off the top over to the collector middle pin on tip 3055. Now the same thing happens with this guy here okay it's basically emulating the same thing as that run wire the thinner wire um, goes from the base but through 2k first to the base and then uh, over to the collector okay now I've got it running in the conventional sense where you told me initially where you have the collector running through a diode over to the uh, actually I got it going through an ammeter right now and you can see that it's about 180 milliamps that's getting to the charge battery okay and um, when I had the ammeter on the source battery it was pulling about 230 I think so things are a little bit more realistic the ferrite's not getting hot now this transformer coil now in as far as high voltage if I pull this lead off the if I disconnect the charge battery okay it goes hard like I mean hard okay the other thing that you told me is stick a bulb across the collector in the emitter and see what happens just with your load and you can see that's a 20 watt light bulb okay so it's running I think I have basically a pulsing circuit that might be capable of uh, restoring batteries. Now, I don't know if you can hear this. That's that ferrite singing. And, uh, I don't know what that means. Because these, this, uh, this, this by filer, I can't hear nothing coming off of it when it had um, a core in it I could I could hear it but then it was hard to say because are you really hearing it sing or are you just listening to the welding rods rattle inside of it due to vibration you know hard to say but yeah 250 milliamps draw I'm getting back you know one I don't know one 170 or something maybe 180 I haven't put it on the digital meter but um, it has climbed past what I've ever seen but like these are just quick tests like I said they're SLA batteries now I did figure out how to open up the uh, the cap it's really pretty simple on these ones. You just, uh, the little caps pop off. Come on. And then the little rubber guys go. Now, it is low. It's definitely low. And the thing about it is, I don't know if this video camera is going to convey this.
can you see how all that's white and crystally down in there? I don't know, I can't really determine whether I'm videoing it or not. Okay, but it's all just crystallized and it's obviously low so I'm not going to continue doing this all night or whatever because it needs some water or some acid and I gotta figure out if I can't buy replacement sulfuric acid from a battery or automotive shop maybe I can as a lab chemical for for science you know um, but then I'd still have to know what concentration it if it's full power, like 20-30% lab grade, or I don't know. But anyways, I'm finally getting a little further. I think I got what you kind of intended me to. As to this ferrite rod, that was purely experimental, but it definitely seems to be getting some good pulses. I mean, that's certainly higher than I ever saw this one go. You know, when I, uh, when I disconnect it, sure it's going to drop, and drop quickly. But nonetheless, you know, if I uh, had the confidence to run it for a while, I would. But I think it needs fluid. So anyways, thanks. I'm working on it, I'm trying. I know I seem like a major disbeliever, but you stuck with me and I think I'm starting to get it <coughs> after frying many transistors. And if you got any suggestions on that resistor, yeah, anyways, that's that, that's what it is. Thanks buddy.